father told me, well, you can go and study whatever you want, but first you have to have something solid. So I said, okay, I will have something solid, and I then went for philosophy and sociology. And he Which said, is very solid. And he said, that was not what I meant. And I said, well, it's too late, I'm sorry. Well, I think that the basic talent of a documentary filmmaker doesn't have anything to do with film. It's really about... No, I'm, I'm, I'm very serious about it. To make a film in terms of, you know, pointing a camera and editing is easy. To connect to the people uh, is much more difficult. So this kind of, you know, looking into eyes and, you know, uh, opening, opening people, that's, as I said, one of the, uh, I, I would say, the biggest talents of, of a documentary filmmaker. As I said, you can have a very good camera person, you can have a very good uh, uh, editor, but that's essential. But also there are tricks. You know, once I was doing a film about war crimes, a very tough one, and I interviewed basically all the major war criminals in my country. And I decided to do something funny, but it worked. I, I took a young girl as a camera person, because I knew uh, that they will be much less aggressive if she is with me. And I was right. The moment she would enter the room, and she was a good camera person, but the moment she would enter the room, they would, you know, try to please her. Uh, so they are, they are, well, guys, they are the tricks of the trade, and that's one of those. Uh, another thing you need in documentaries is time. You need a lot of time, and you need time for the people to adjust to the camera. But because of that, you never ask important questions first. Never. You start with general stuff. You start with, you know, uh, the school, uh, the, the people maybe you know, uh, both of you. you. You start very general. You need, they need time to forget about the camera. So if you start with very important issues uh, at the time you start to shoot, it is quite likely that you are not going to get the best answers. Again, it's risky with people and it's ethically questionable. But that's the risk you have to take if you really want to make good films in terms of coming really close to the people, not to what they want to give you uh, for what they think they are. And as I said in the beginning, it's not always, especially not in the films like Laura, it's not always the most uh, enjoyable and pleasant work. Uh, sometimes it's very tough. Uh, as I said yesterday to you, uh, I had in Laura a situation in which one of the witnesses during the shoot uh, pissed his pants because he was uh, uh, wet his pants because he was re-traumatized talking about the prison. And I had, a, a, I had to make a decision, do I continue to shoot or not? Do I show that I saw it? And we just continued and he was grateful to us that we continued. And tell us the end. At the end we just, uh, at, the, at the very end we just quickly left the room and came 10 uh, minutes later and just pretend nothing uh, happened so he could, he could clean himself. What is important is that people don't feel threatened by you, which means they don't feel um, camera as something that is taking the advantage of them or controlling them. You, you should give them uh, comfort that you are not going uh, to use them in a different way than they would generally, generally like it to be. Again, another thing is you don't want to promise them something you will not deliver. For example, many people promise characters, okay, you will come to the editing room and you tell me if you want me this scene or that scene to uh, me to take out. Uh, I never do that. Um, it's dangerous because people see themselves, especially for the first time when they see themselves, they're, they're usually shocked the first time. But then there's a second screening and third screening and they get used to it. So again, it's a lot of different, there are a lot of different issues here. It's, it has all to do 
uh, with, with understanding people, uh, being uh, good in reading uh, psychology of other people. And also I'm very often saying, you know, it's very similar to, to police investigation because um, the technique is the same, which means you ask a question, you don't get the answer, then in 10 minutes or tomorrow you ask again the same question in a different way and then you go around and you try to provoke a bit and something that we will, we will uh, discuss later, you have to know when you talk and you have to know when you don't say anything and wait and wait and wait. My first cut, this is 87 minutes, my first cut was 2 hours and 10 minutes. And when I came to about 100 minutes, I, and I would strongly suggest you to, to do that, I organized a test screening, but a proper test screening, not friends, not filmmakers, not filmmakers, no friends, no family. Uh, which means young and old, men and women, uh, university teachers, and you know, uh, people uh, selling hot dogs, the way it should be done uh, in a small, in, in small theatre, in a small cinema. And there were about 30 people and they have a very elaborate questionnaire. And uh, I went out. Is it a standard questionnaire you use all the time? Uh, no, it's a questionnaire I have for each of the films. I ask, okay, which stories are the most interesting, what they would suggest uh, to take out, uh, which characters they like the most, which characters they hate the most, blah, 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 very, very precise, and how would you improve this and that. And so there were three pages, but it was just basically yes, no, a simple question there. And after that, I, I, I sat down with my crew and I invited all the people who wanted to talk to us after they did, and it's anonymous, of course, the questionnaire is anonymous. And then we talked with the people who saw the film for the first time. And I can tell you, with all my experience, it helped me a lot. And I, after that, I cut film to this length. Uh, with all, uh, I didn't accept all the suggestions, but many of those were very legitimate uh, comments. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and again, one of the problems I see very often with young people, that they invite friends and filmmakers and colleagues into the editing room. And of course, then you, <laughs> Uh, praising each other or being excited about it and that's the most important thing in the world but you have you know to have somebody who works nine to five and says okay I'll, I'll see it what's a big deal and you have to have this kind that's your audience uh, it's very important what they think it, it's a standard American practice and it but it's simple and it helps a lot never trust your friends and colleagues when it's about your film. Please, <laughs> they like you. And that's the worst thing they can do with you uh, when it's about your film. I'm, when I'm joking, I'm, uh, I'm always saying that the filmmakers of documentaries are divided in several group, groups. The, the first one are activists, the second one are purists, and the third one are realists. And I praise myself to be the third group. You know, the activists are people who don't care about the film, they care about the issue, which is great. But very often films are boring. Uh, the purists are people who believe that the way of filmmaking is the most important thing. It has to be observational only. Nothing apart from flying on the wall does not come into the question. It's outrageous. You don't, which is illusion. Because the moment you, you have a camera in, of course, you, you intervene. But, okay, these are the purists. And the realist, which he became, in time, understanding that there are different stories and different techniques. And it's not about, again, it's not about me, it's about the story. So it's not about, you know, look at me, how good I am and how great I can use this technique. It's about this technique, helping me to express what I want, to make a film I like, and audience will like, even with the music. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, we came to the end. Thank you very much. Thank you.